Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over a range of worked examples to show you how to do problems involving Newton's laws, friction and tension. Now if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on Newton's laws of motion as that video will help you with this one. So let's get started. We're going to look at seven worked examples as that's going to give you a good grasp of Newton's laws, friction and tension and how these topics can be combined within questions. Question one says, what is the unbalanced force required to accelerate a two kilogram ball at six meters? per second squared. Well, we're going to write down what we know from the question, so we're trying to find the unbalanced force. We know that the mass of the ball is 2 kilograms, and the acceleration of the ball is 6 meters per second squared. So writing down our equation relating F, M and A, we have Newton's second law, F equals M, A, and substituting in our numbers, this equals 2 times 6, which is equal to 12 Newtons. Question 2 says a 3 kilogram block is pushed along a table with a force of 20 newtons. It experiences a friction force of 4 newtons. So you'll see you've got the 20 newtons moving to the right there and 4 newtons moving to the left. Ideally what we should have is this arrow here being longer than this one just to show the difference in the magnitude between both vectors. So 20 newtons there, 4 newtons there. And in part A we're asked to find the acceleration of the block. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work out what the unbalanced force is here because we're given two forces and we want to simplify this to one force. So all we're going to do is say that F is equal to 20 minus 4, which is equal to 60 newtons to the right. So all we're doing is looking at the difference between the two forces. So we've got 20 to the right and 4 to the left, which gives a result of 16 newtons to the right. Then what we're going to do is write down what we know from the question. So we're trying to find the acceleration. We now know that the unbalanced force F is 16 newtons to the right, and the mass of the block is 3 kilograms. So writing down our equation, we have F equals MA, and rearranging for A this time, we get A equals F over M. Substituting in the numbers, this equals 16 divided by 3, and putting that into your calculator gives an answer of 5.3 meters per second squared. Part B says, in which direction does the block move? Well, because our unbalanced force is 16 newtons to the right, then the block must be accelerating to the right. So the block moves to the right. Question 3 says that a force of 20 newtons acts on a system of blocks, as shown below. Calculate the force acting on the 5 kilogram block. So we have 20 newtons acting on this system of blocks here, and you'll see that we've got a frictionless surface, so the two blocks are going to move easily along the surface. Now, whenever you see a question like this with two masses side by side or connected together in some way, this is called a connected system. And the trick to answering these questions is that we first need to determine the overall acceleration of the system. So we're going to use Newton's second law to do that. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find acceleration first. We know that the force is 20 newtons acting on both blocks, and then we want the mass of the entire system. So we need to add up the two masses. So we get that mass equals 12 plus 5, which equals 17 kilograms. We can then use Newton's second law, so we have F equals MA. Rearranging for acceleration A, we have A equals F over M. And substituting in the numbers, this equals 20 divided by 17, which is equal to 1.2 meters per second squared. But we're not finished because we've worked out the acceleration, but we're asked to calculate the force acting on the 5 kilogram block. So to do this, we're only concerned with data about the 5 kilogram block. So we're going to use the mass of the 5 kilogram block, we're going to use the acceleration that we've just worked out, and we're going to use Newton's second law for a second time. So we can now calculate the force acting on the 5 kilogram block, and so writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the force acting on the 5 kilogram block. We know the mass of the block is 5 kilograms of course, and the acceleration that we've just worked out is 1.2 meters per second squared. So using Newton's second law again, F equals MA, we can substitute in our numbers to get 5 times 1.2, which gives a final answer of 6 Newtons. Question 4 is pretty similar to question 3 and it says that a car of mass 1,300 kilograms pulls a horse box of mass 500 kilograms along a straight, horizontal road. Part A says to calculate the overall acceleration. You'll notice that we have a forward force in our diagram of 2,800 newtons and we've got a friction force on the system of 280 newtons. So we've got another connected system here because we've got a coupling between the car and the horse box. So we're going to do the same as what we did in question 3 and firstly calculate the overall acceleration of the system. But because we've got two forces, we need to firstly work out what the unbalanced force is going to be on the system in order to get the overall acceleration of the system. So we can write that F equals 2800 minus 280, which is equal to 2520 newtons to the right. So because we've got 2800 newtons to the right, 280 newtons to the left. Once we subtract this value from this value, we end up with this answer. So our unbalanced 
balance force is going to move to the right, so the acceleration of the system must also be going to the right. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find acceleration. We now know that unbalanced force is 2520 newtons, and the mass is going to be the mass of the system, which is going to be the mass of this added on to the mass of this. So we have 1300 plus 500, which equals 1800 kilograms. Now we can write down our equation, so in Newton's second law, we have F equals MA, rearranging for A gives us A equals F over M, and substituting in the numbers, we get 2520 divided by 1800, which gives an answer of 1.4 meters per second squared. Part B says to calculate the tension in the coupling. Well, we firstly need to identify that the force here is tension, so the force in the coupling is tension. So we can rewrite the force F as T, so we can say that F equals T. And so writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the force F, or the tension T in this case, so T equals question mark. And if we look back at this picture, we can see the mass that's going to be causing this tension in the coupling is the 500 kilograms from the horse box. So our mass here is going to be 500 kilograms, because that is what is being pulled along. So the mass equals 500 kilograms and their acceleration is the acceleration of the system that we just worked out, so 1.4 meters per second squared. So writing down our equation now, instead of F equals MA, we can say T equals MA, just replacing the F with T. And putting in our numbers, we get 500 times 1.4, which gives a final answer of 700 newtons. Question 5 says that a 4 kilogram trolley and two 2 kilogram trolleys are connected by two light strings and pulled by a 12 newton force as shown. And so you'll see from the picture we have our 2 kilograms, 2 kilograms and the 4 kilograms in the middle and we have tension T1 and tension T2 in the two strings respectively. We've also got 12 newtons pulling the whole system to the right as we said in the question. It then says assuming the surface to be frictionless, calculate the acceleration of the three trolleys. Now this question is a bit more complex than question 4 because we've now got three the objects rather than just two, but it can just be analysed in a very similar way. So assuming the surface to be frictionless, part A says calculate the acceleration of the three trolleys. So we want the acceleration of the whole system. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the acceleration. We know the force is 12 newtons to the right, and our mass is going to be the mass of the whole system, so we need to add them up. So we get 2 plus 4 plus 2, which equals 8 kilograms. Writing down our equation, Newton's second law again, we have F equals MA. Rearranging for acceleration A, we get A equals F over M. Substituting in the numbers gives us 12 divided by 8, which gives us a final answer of 1.5 meters per second squared. Part B says to find the tension in each string, T1 and T2. So if we look back at the picture, what we need to identify is that the masses causing the tension in T1 are this mass and this mass, and that the mass causing the tension in T2 is this mass only. So we need to take those masses into account when we're trying to calculate the two tensions. So if we focus on tension T1 first of all, Again, looking at the diagram, we've got a mass of 4 kilograms and a mass of 2 kilograms being pulled along. So in order to find out the tension in T1, we need to use these two masses. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find T1. We know the mass causing the tension in the string T1 is going to be 4 plus 2, which is 6 kilograms and the acceleration of the system is 1.5 meters per second squared, as we worked out earlier. Writing down our equation, instead of writing F equals MA, we can again just write T1 equals MA this time, and substituting in the numbers, we have 6 times 1.5, which gives a final answer of 9 newtons. For the tension in string 2, T2, remember there's only one mass being pulled along behind that string, and so it's only that mass that is causing the tension there. So we're trying to find T2, our mass is going to be the 2 kilograms at the end of the system, and their acceleration is 1.5 meters per second squared, as before. So writing down our equation this time, we have T2 equals MA. Substituting in our numbers, we have 2 times 1.5, which gives a final answer of 3 newtons. So the 12 newtons causing the entire system to accelerate to the right is split up into 9 newtons for tension T1 and 3 newtons for tension T2, which totals the 12 newtons. Question 6 says that a 2 kilogram mass and a 3 kilogram mass are linked by a light string passed over a frictionless pulley. Now this question is just a different type of connected system, but it's very similar to what you've seen already. It then says calculate the acceleration of the system. So we've got the frictionless pulley over here and that is just something that can rotate to allow these two masses to move. Now it's maybe worth pointing out first of all which way this system is going to move in. So because we've got two kilograms here and three kilograms here, 
You should be thinking that the 3 kilograms is going to have a larger weight than the 2 kilograms downwards, so that means that this one's going to actually move down here, whereas the 2 kilograms will move up the way, because this one is heavier. To calculate the acceleration of the system, we first need to calculate the weight of both masses separately. So for the 2 kilogram mass, first of all, writing down what we know, we're trying to find the weight, we know the mass is 2 kilograms, and g is 9.8 on Earth, so we get 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So writing down our equation, w equals mg, we can substitute in our numbers to get 2 times 9.8, which gives a final answer of 19.6 newtons. For the 3 kilogram mass this time, doing the exact same, we're trying to find the weight, we know the mass is 3 kilograms, and g is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So writing down w equals mg, substituting in the numbers, we get 3 times 9.8, which gives an answer of 29.4 newtons. So because we've now got two weight values or two forces in a sense, we need to work out what the unbalanced force is going to be to cause the system to move. So we now determine the unbalanced force, the difference between the two weights. So we're just going to take the smaller weight away from the bigger weight, and we get F equals 29.4 minus 19.6, which gives us 9.8 newtons downwards. So now that we have our unbalanced force and we can work out our total mass of the system, then we can lastly calculate the acceleration of the system. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the acceleration. We know the unbalanced force is 9.8 newtons downwards, and our mass is going to be the mass of the system, which is 2 plus 3 equals 5 kilograms. Using Newton's second law, we have F equals ma. Rearranging for a, we get a equals F over m, and substituting in the numbers gives us 9.8 divided by 5, which gives a final answer of 2.0 meters per second squared if you round it. Lastly, question 7 says that a liquid fueled rocket takes off from the moon vertically upwards. It accelerates at 3.2 meters per second squared. The weight of the rocket is 40,000 newtons. So this is a classic question involving the motion of a rocket, where we also have things like Newton's second law, free body diagrams and frictional forces at play as well. It says in part A to sketch a free body diagram of the situation. Well, if we sketch out a rocket, we should be thinking that because the motion of the rocket is going to be vertical as it launches, we're not going to have any horizontal forces. So all of the forces here are going to be entirely vertical. So we can draw a force up the way, and that is going to be our thrust force, which we'll call F thrust. And we're then going to have a force down the way, which is going to be our weight. And we're told in the question that this is 40,000 newtons. We're also told in the question that it accelerates at 3.2 meters per second Squared. So this is my free body diagram because we're not given any frictional forces in the question due to air resistance for example. Part B says to calculate the thrust provided by the rocket engines. So if we go back to the picture, this is the force that we're trying to find. Well we first need to determine the mass of the rocket as this is going to help us. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find the mass M. We know that the weight is 40,000 newtons and the gravitational field strength G is 1.6 newtons per kilogram on the moon. So writing down our equation W equals mg, rearranging for mass we get m equals W over G, and substituting in the numbers gives us 40,000 divided by 1.6, which gives us a mass of 25,000 kilograms for the rocket plus the fuel. Remember we want to calculate the thrust though so we're not finished, so next we can now calculate the unbalanced force F causing the rocket to move upwards. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find F, we know that the mass is 25,000 kilograms, as we've just calculated, and the acceleration of the rocket is 3.2 meters per second squared, as we're told in the question. So writing down Newton's second law, F equals ma, we can substitute in our numbers to get 25,000 times 3.2, which gives a final answer of 80,000 newtons. And now that we have the unbalanced force F upwards and the weight downwards, we can work out what the thrust force upwards is going to be. So finally, we can determine the thrust force. And we can do this by writing our overall unbalanced force in terms of the thrust force and the weight. So the unbalanced force F is equal to the thrust force minus the weight. Because remember, the unbalanced force is almost like your overall force that is making the rocket actually move upwards in the end. So we can therefore rearrange to get F thrust on its own. So if we add weight to both sides, we get F thrust equals F plus W, which equals 80,000 newtons from here, plus the 40,000 newtons weight from the question, which is equal to 120,000 newtons. Part C says, assuming constant thrust from the burning fuel, explain what happens to the acceleration of the rocket as it rises. Well, as the rocket rises, acceleration will increase for a number of reasons. Firstly, as height increases, the weight decreases since G decreases. This results in the unbalanced force becoming greater, hence the acceleration will be greater. And as the fuel burns, mass decreases, so by F equals MA, if F stays constant, 
and mass decreases, then acceleration must increase to keep F the same. So both of these result in an increase in the acceleration of the rocket. Now remember from the theory video on rockets that there will actually be a factor causing acceleration to decrease slightly, and that is the air resistance that will act against the rocket's motion as its speed increases. But it's not a big enough effect to cause the acceleration to decrease overall. Part D says, would the rocket take off on Earth? Well, we need to do a wee calculation to work this out. So we've already worked out the mass of the rocket and we know its weight on the moon, but we want to try and work out what its weight on the Earth is going to be so that we can redraw a free body diagram for the case on the Earth. So we're trying to find the weight on the Earth. We know that the mass is 25,000 kilograms and the gravitational field strength on the Earth is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So writing down our equation, we have W equals mg, and substituting in the numbers gives 25,000 times 9.8, which gives us 245,000 newtons. So drawing a free body diagram for the rocket on the Earth this time, just going to draw a box, and we've got our thrust force upwards, which is 120,000 newtons, because that will be the same no matter what planet you're on, and the weight this time is 245,000 newtons. So we can hopefully see that the weight downwards is greater than the thrust force upwards, so the rocket cannot take off on Earth, because the unbalanced force now is downwards rather than upwards, so it cannot take off. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.